The Food and Business Tax Fairness Act is a bipartisan initiative being advocated by Tennesseans for Fair Taxation, along with small business leaders and a wide array of community organizations across the state. First, it's important to remind ourselves why businesses pay taxes to begin with. The short answer is that they're part of the same communities that we're a part of, and their prosperity is deeply intertwined with the prosperity of the community as a whole and the public structures that our tax dollars make possible are an important part of that. The police and fire departments that provide security for our homes also provide security for their places of business. This sense of security is important for businesses to be able to operate. Our court systems also play an important role in the economic prosperity of the business community. It provides a stable set of rules that businesses can count on, protects their copyrights, and helps enforce the contracts that they sign. Our transportation systems are also an important part of the prosperity of the businesses in our state. Not only does it allow our businesses to ship goods to their stores and back and forth, but it also allows customers to find their way to the company storefront. As well, a strong and vibrant education system is essential to creating a healthy and prosperous business climate. They get trained employees educated at taxpayer expense who design their software, develop their marketing campaigns, and manage their finances. That's why businesses consistently rank education as one of the most important factors in deciding business location. Even public investments in parks and conservation have important economic impacts for the business community. These public investments are the backbone of Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, and much of the tourism industry in the state. In short, the economic prosperity of our nation and our state is made possible by the public structures, including the courts, schools, police and fire protection, transportation system, parks, and public health, built through generations of public investments for the common good. As a result, it should come as no surprise that Tennessee, like most all other states, ask those businesses to help support these public structures through our tax system. Tennessee levies two kinds of business taxes, one on corporate profits and the other on corporate assets, machinery and inventory. Our main concern, however, is the tax on profits, also known as the excise tax. For small businesses, the excise tax is simply 6.5% of their total income. For larger businesses that cross state lines, they pay the same 6.5% but on the portion of income that they earn within Tennessee. Everything so far generally works well. The main problem facing Tennessee's business taxes is we still use what's called separate reporting. This basically means that each corporation files a separate tax return, even if those corporations are all part of a larger corporate family. That's the problem. Because the parent company and its various subsidiaries file separate tax returns, Tennessee is vulnerable to a host of tax avoidance schemes and creative accounting practices. One of the more prevalent of those schemes is what's called Delaware Holding Companies, also known as Nevada Holding Companies or Passive Investment Corporations. They work a little like this. The parent company sets up a subsidiary in Delaware as a holding company. Then they transfer ownership of their corporate logo, trademarks, and other intellectual properties. Now, when the parent company makes a profit, instead of showing those taxable profits in Tennessee, they transfer a portion of those profits up to Delaware for the rights to use their own logo and trademark. In the end, the taxable profits in Tennessee can be cut in half, sometimes more. Meanwhile, the profits that were shifted to Delaware enjoy tax-free status because Delaware has created a tax haven for these types of holding companies. Meanwhile, Back on Wall Street, the punchline of this grand joke is told. As the parent company and subsidiaries are added right back together when it comes time to report to the shareholders, because they know this is all just one corporation. What's more, this problem will only get bigger if Tennessee does not take action to close these loopholes. A host of accounting firms, mostly in Delaware and Nevada, are actively encouraging this practice. One Delaware company makes no apologies, advertising on their website, quote, save your corporation significant amounts of state tax dollars every year by establishing a Delaware holding company. A Delaware holding company is an effective tool to shield a corporation's passive income from home state taxation. 
Another accounting firm lists the benefits of creating a holding company, with tax minimization first on its list. Already, there are an estimated 7,000 holding companies in Delaware alone, and thousands more in Nevada. A brief look at the companies that we know are operating holding companies in either Delaware or Nevada sheds light on how big of a problem this really is. In fairness to these companies, though, what they're doing is perfectly legal. In fact, one can argue that they're only fulfilling their obligation to their stockholders to make the greatest amount of profit they can while staying within the letter of the law. The problem is the law. That's what needs to be fixed. In addition to holding companies, there are a host of other loopholes that all hinge on the ability of corporations to divide themselves into subsidiaries and shift profits back and forth. As long as Tennessee continues to use separate reporting, corporations will continue to shift profits back and forth between parent company and its various subsidiaries in order to avoid paying state taxes. Our outdated tax code essentially encourages this behavior, but it doesn't have to be this way. The alternative to separate reporting is what's known as combined reporting. Under combined reporting rules, the parent company and all its subsidiaries are added back together and file a single unified tax return. This one simple, common sense solution closes a host of corporate tax loopholes with one fell swoop. That's why 21 states already require our recently enacted combined reporting, including most recently Texas, New York, West Virginia, Michigan, and Vermont. That's the kind of common sense solution that's at the core of the Food and Business Tax Fairness Act. By closing the loopholes, we add fairness to our business taxes. The revenue recovered from closing these loopholes will be used to reduce the state food tax, still one of the highest in the nation. In fact, the food tax in Tennessee is equivalent to 28 days worth of groceries every year. In addition to helping families, this plan will help small business people more effectively compete with their larger competitors because most small businesses in Tennessee don't have subsidiaries in Delaware to hide their profits in. So they pay the full 6.5% while their larger competitors pay a fraction of that. That's why citizens across the state are joining in the call for the Food and Business Tax Fairness Act. First, it's about fairness for families putting food on the table. It's also about fairness for small businesses working to compete. To learn more, visit Tennesseans for Fair Taxation at fairtaxation.org or by calling 888-671-5188.